according to Nahum, Nahum chapter 3 and verse 9, he says that the people from Ethiopia and Egypt had a power that was boundless, limitless, without limit. And that was written in 714 BC, right around the same time that Isaiah 18 was written. So what we're dealing with here is that we're dealing with a, a group of people, black people from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that uh, were basically presidents of the planet, if you will. Uh, people who were in world domination. Three-fifths of human beings, if you will, uh, viewed as animals, viewed as, viewed as tools to build the dreams of the Europeans. Of people with clear affluent features, nose, the profile, and it was just incontrovertible. The facts, the reality that black people had designed this civilization. civilization that black people had created. There was a, a definite crisis of the conscience because there were white brothers really intensely fighting this thing called slavery and they were pushing for the, the liberation of the black man, condemning the, the, the trade itself and, and freeing slaves in America and they were torn. And so you can see where the impetus and the need to uh, formulate rationalizations for this developed. What to do? What are the anthropologists and archaeologists going to do in dealing with this information? And that is what I believe what sponsored, uh, maybe consciously in some cases, unconsciously in other cases, what we could call the cover-up. The cover-up of the accomplishments of black people. Um, uh, Chancellor Williams wrote a book called The Destruction of Black Civilization. And in this book, he outlines seven points as to why he feels that there was a cover-up. Ignore, just refuse to publish any facts of African history that don't go along with our racial theories. We need to create a religious and a scientific doctrine so that uh, African slavery that bad after all. What we need to do is flood the world with new African histories that contain our European perspectives only. Start renaming people.
people and places. Replace African names with Arabic and European names. This will disguise their true black identity. Let's change the criteria for defining race. For example, one drop of Negro blood in America makes you a Negro, no matter how light the skin. Yes, when we're putting ancient African history, reverse the standard. No matter how dark the skin, woolly the hair, or thick the lips, you don't have to be a Negro. When black contribution to civilization is too obvious, let's find a way to attribute it to outside white influences. When all the ancient historians contradict your theory, we'll just discredit them. Chancellor Williams was a scholar, and we feel that his observations have a lot of merit to them. But there are, there are his personal observations. Talk about the, the rewriting of history. Um, we have to set that in the context that we're talking about during the 1800s is when this started. We're not really talking about contemporary scholars um, primarily when dealing with this subject. You could not go from Egypt being a Negro civilization to being a white civilization without rewriting history.